Hey guys, welcome to Conversation. My name is John Thomas and I'm hanging out with some friends, my friend Charity Bowman Webb. We have Susan Karg and, and Greg Card, and it helps if you actually say the names right. That's good. So we're, we're actually together because we're on a team. We're, we're doing this course, this limitless course. And I don't know if you've seen this yet. It's on our website. It's something that Charity has written that the Lord's given her to begin to awaken and release creative intelligence. That'll be an interesting conversation. But that's for another time. What we wanted to talk about today is, is talking about growth in artistic expression and paths to bring acceptance of your artistic giftings into the church. So, I mean, I, I spent a number of years as a pastor, and mm -hmm. as a pastor, I, I would often have people that would come to me and they would have something that God had given them that they wanted to release. I remember we had a, a guy that came and was significantly gifted I mean, and genuinely gifted. You could recognize the gifting in him, and he wanted to start a prayer meeting. And, you know, he started a prayer meeting. I want to do Friday night prayer. I want to lead this Friday night prayer. We're going to do it. We're going to, you know, see revival come. God sent me here to pray for revival. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, that's awesome. Why don't, why don't you come be a part of our community? We really need right. help um, cleaning the facility. And, you know, maybe you could come in, help us clean the bathrooms, help us to, to vacuum the floors. Oh, no, no, no. My gift is too big. I, I can't do that. I, I, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm to pray. That's all I can do because that's, right. that's what God's called me to do. And I'm like, well, that's wonderful. And he goes, well, are you going to let me start a prayer meeting? Well, not here. Because yeah. here we're looking yeah. for people that are part of our community, looking for people that are actually part of our family. And being part of family means that, that we all have a part to play. And I'm more interested in servants than I am gifting. Right. And you find gifting anywhere. Mm. Gifting's a dime a dozen. Mm. But if you find somebody with a heart, you, you, that's priceless a heart after God and a heart after his right. people. And I was thinking about this just in, in relationship to creativity, because I, I think the same principle holds true, whether it's somebody that wants to preach or whether it's somebody that wants to prophesy or, or lead worship, or if it's somebody that, that wants to do art, that that same principle is, is key because it's not just a, a natural activity that doesn't have meaning in the spirit. It's actually a spiritual activity that's releasing something in the spirit. And Paul yeah. said that we need to know those that labor among us, mm. uh, that there's a key for relationship. What, what do you guys see in that? Well, I, th I, I would uh, wholeheartedly agree that the first place to start for any gift to serve the body or to be involved in the body to release something is, is to be part of family. Really, and if you're going to be, if if you think about a normal family, a natural family, then, you know, everybody has to help with the cleaning. Yeah. Uh, sometime everybody has to learn to cook because we all need to eat. You know, there's nobody that gets to sort of sit there <laughs> while the rest of us empty all the garbage cans or, you wow. know, do all the food shopping. And the same principle applies very much when we're raising up people within the church, when they might paint, they might dance, they might be really smart, you know, even if they're like a doctor or a lawyer and they, they want to teach, everybody still needs to serve. Everybody mm. needs to learn to make coffee and serve people. And and that is basic character training, isn't it? Yeah. It's like you teach your kids, they're going to have to learn to iron their own clothes one day. But that is part of life and the spiritual dynamic of, of learning those skills of actually serving other people in mm. the church is more important. I think that's something we We've learned through streams and John Paul's teachings over the year that when you live it, it really works. Yeah. Is that character should always be developed to be greater than gifting. Because as yes. you because he watched so many incredibly gifted people, like astoundingly gifted people, I used to tell those stories, they would fall. Yeah. And actually, what protects us the most of any type of gifting will be the character. Mm -hmm. And having, you know, having taken that course 18 years ago and being part of raising up other people. I've always tried to follow that principle for me and them. And you see people really sustain it for the long term in their character, but also grow yeah. beautifully in their gifting yeah. because the heart, their first heart is to love God and then serve other people. And then they get to develop gifting. Yeah. And I think that way around is longevity and stability. Well, and not just then develop gifting, but also once they develop gifting to still maintain the heart of, of service. 
Absolutely. Yeah. And John, John Paul, yeah. when, when we were on staff in New Hampshire, mm -hmm. he, he would wait until everybody left the office and he would go down and clean the toilets. Right. Right. Because yeah. he, he never wanted to get to the point where he was too gifted or mm -hmm. he was too important to do that place of service. And so he maintained that not just as a mindset, but practically with his hands. He yeah. actually did that. Yeah. And I mean, we had a period of time. Now we've got someone that comes in and volunteers to, to clean here at the offices. But we had a rotation for the staff sure. where everybody yeah. would clean the toilets yeah. on a regular basis. Yeah. And I'm like, don't leave me out of that rotation. Oh, but John, you're so busy. Oh, yeah, I know. Don't leave me out of the rotation. Yeah. Because yeah. this is this is just what we do. This is yeah. we're, we're all giving our part to make this thing work. Keeps us connected, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. I did years of like being the person when our ministry was much, much smaller of being the key person setting up events. And now obviously we have a lot more people, we have a lot mm. more teams, but even so I'm very happy to still be stacking the chairs and putting yeah. things away because of the same principle. We have to stay connected mm. to the servanthood or we can forget it. Yeah. And pride can sneak in wow. before, you yeah. know, without us realizing it. Yeah. yeah. I'll tell you that, that place of service and humility, that it's key to being accepted in the church. What are some things that you guys have seen that's key to, to having a gift accepted in the church, specifically arts? Well, along with what we're, we're talking about even now, um, and I know this even for myself, um, I would be what you would call a lone ranger. Mm. Um, and now a lot of that for artists comes because what we do, it's our time by ourselves. Right. Mostly. Right. Now, if you're painting in public, right. that's different. But a lot of it's generated between you and the Lord. So you mm -hmm. tend to be a, a bit more isolated. Um, and so what I think is really important is that artists have relationships with one another, but also with people that aren't artists in the church. That's right. And a lot of times yeah. we won't because we'll say, well, they don't get me. Mm. And I, I understand that because that can be a frustration. But the thing is, when you have relationships with all kinds of people, number one, you're going to understand how you serve them yeah. with your gift. But also, they're going to speak into your life in ways you absolutely cannot see. Mm. Wow. So the key yeah. is to me is the absolute relationships one to another. And, and also... Sometimes we can have issues of entitlement because of my gifting, because I'm really right. good at this. I should be the one. Mm. Um, and so, and, and it, you know, it cuts both ways because there is a level of confidence to do some of the arts, especially in public, that you really need to have, that right. courage and confidence. But it can tip to the entitlement and the other things. Sure. So again, relationship um, and working with leaders. Um, you know, I've talked many times how uh, key for me was working with Joe Shrewsbury in the prophetic because he helped order my mind. He challenged me. Um, he did get me, but he also challenged me, you know, uh, and, and I, I would not be sitting here today even saying what I'm saying without that many years of a relationship right. with someone who was completely different than I am, mm -hmm. yeah. yet yeah, we've learned from good. each other. So uh, relationship to me is key. Yeah. Um, relationships. That's really, that's really yeah. good. I'm sitting here and I'm, I'm looking behind you at the, the menu board on the wall. I'm, th <laughs> I'm thinking, what I'm thinking about is that like, ever since I was a child, um, my mother would say, you're going to have to wash the dishes. And I go, Dishes. Oh, come on. Now you're going to have to wash the dishes. So I'd go in and I'd wash the dishes. I'd wash the dishes. And I did this most of the time I lived at home as a child or as a kid. Um, it finally got to the point where it didn't matter. I'd just go in there and I'd be thinking about something else, wash the dishes. But as I got older, I thought, I'm tired of washing dishes. I really am. I've been doing this for years. I'm tired of washing dishes. <laughs> 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 I wish I had a portable dishwasher that I could just yeah. drag around with me. I'm tired of doing this. <laughs> um, so in our household, Susan does most all the cooking because I don't cook very well. If I make a meal, it's not going to turn out very good. <laughs> so I do a lot of all the, the kitchen work kind of stuff, clean up and dishes and so on and so on. Um, and I find myself at times going, 
well, I'm still washing these dishes. They might have done this for 50 some years. And washing dishes. But then I have that thought, yeah, that's right, you are. That's right, you are. And then, you know, into church life, spiritual life. Um, I don't mind labor. I, I, I'm fine sweeping floors. I just, I don't really mind it. I just, in times, I really sort of enjoy it because it's just sort of, in a sense, it's kind of like mindless activity. Yeah, you just, yeah. and you get it done and you're all done. <clears throat> but I've encountered other folks, you know, that come along in the arts that, what? No, I don't, no, 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 no. That very thing you're talking about, like, oh, I'm too, this whole thing is too significant for me to be having to do that and think about this. And I've noticed that those people actually, it spills over into the way they make their art too. Mm. And they don't see that. Wow. They, and they, huh. they start messing up with the way they make their art. And it, it's like, it's almost like they're unwilling to put a fullness of their capacity right. into the art making right. because they want it quick and short. They want it quick and short and right. fast. How fast right. can I get this done? How much notoriety can I get? How much money can I get for it? And as soon as I see that starting to happen, I go, this is going to be a long, hard, slow road for you. It just, yeah. you have to learn this lesson. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. Yeah. But on the other hand, I've noticed also in the arts, most of the people that we've worked with are really very, very much servant-oriented mm -hmm. people. They really jump forward. Yep. They want to help. They want to do things. They want to help them get them get things done and get them done correctly. Um, it's only it's sort of few and far between the, the others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that that that's amazing because in in most of the quote unquote spiritual giftings, I mean, you go into the the arena of the prophetic or the arena of worship leading. Um, in my personal experience and in some of my friends, it, it seems like the, the larger portion thinks that that's all they should do. Right. Um, yeah, you know, just, I, I just, I just lead worship. You know, I, I don't, I shouldn't have to, you know, make all these phone calls and right. emails and actually schedule things and practice and, and help out to full bulletins. And, but, but that, that just doesn't work as a family. No. And, and, and that piece, I love, I love how you brought out that piece about how it affects the yeah. art. It actually affects all of life. Yes, right. exactly. Oh, it, does? Yeah. it spills over. Yeah. Uh, it's like a worldview yeah. that, that what, however you see things, that's how you're going to interact with them. Right. Right. And yeah. so that worldview, when you see yourself as that way, then you're going to live in the world in that way. And boy, that's... that's yeah, the, that's the cool. other, yeah. I guess another way of viewing that is that whole entitlement kind of mentality that seems to be very prevalent in the world today. Uh, both, I'm not going to point out this or that, but it, it both seems to be in older folks and younger folks too. Somewhere along the way, it's, the thing has gotten crossed over and they think, I'm entitled to this, I get this, I don't have to answer for that, and da 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 da, -da. Yeah. It, it, and it makes, they don't seem to understand how difficult it actually makes their life living like that. Mm. You know, you brought up a thing about scheduling. Um, you know, everyone always thinks, well, artists are more right-brained. Um, and Explain what you mean by oh, that. Oh, I will. Okay, so, <laughs> you know, we have a right brain and a left brain, left side to our, two sides to our brain. And the, the right side does can't handle more of the visions and the emotions, and the left side is really much more about order and mathematics. And so for a long time, you were told you're one or the other. You're either right-brained or left-brained, which isn't true because yeah. God gave us two sides, so that doesn't right. even make any sense. So then it would be said, well, because artists are, you know, they're free-spirited and they're visionary, uh, that they are right-brained. Now, in this case right here, um, and But the truth of the matter is, it's just where you start. Right. And so I tend to be a bit more what you mm. might say airy-fairy, um, and because I start in the right. Mm. But yet Greg is really ordered, and his work is just beautiful. Yeah. He starts in the left. Um, but when it came to admin and, uh, and scheduling, I'm actually the scheduler of the team. Mm. I do the admin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I had to learn mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. yeah. See, and there's a difference. You could yes. say, well, it's just not my strengths. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, it's 
the Holy Spirit would challenge me, you're being intellectually lazy. Right. There'd be times I'd be out thinking, you're, you're being intellectually lazy. Okay. Um, so I learned mm-hmm. to a point. Now, can I do it like like a, a person, you know, like the spreadsheet that you do? <laughs> Small sheets. That would be another level of challenge for me. <laughs> but, but I'm really good at scheduling the team and the emails and all of that. It, but I had to learn it. And the Holy Spirit sure helped me. So it's really not an excuse. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You got to learn. the skills you got to learn, you know. Yes. Yeah. And I think some of that is servanthood. Yes, it is. Because I was trained as an artist as well. And as a young artist, I didn't want to do spreadsheets. Mm-hmm. Not, not a chance. But when I became, when I started to lead a ministry and we started to do um, evangelism and the teams got bigger, there isn't, you know, in Scotland, it's a smaller country. There's not as much money in ministry. That You have to wear a lot more hats. It's a yeah. lot more down to earth. And so like Susan, there was no magic paid administrator that right. was going to do all the work that nobody else wanted to do. And and I was it. And in the early days, I, like Susan, I had no idea how, how what a spreadsheet was or how open one or, but I had to learn and yeah. I had to pray. And I just, for years, I've just said, Lord, help me. So that is a bit like I would rather have emptied a bin than done a spreadsheet. <laughs> right. There right. was a day, you know, <laughs> no. but now now I have all the skills that I need. And when I need more, I pray for more. It's what's lovely is you grow in faith on the journey that the thing you least liked then doesn't become a problem. That's something I've learned yeah. is that if we're willing, you know, God will stretch our faith, not just in our area of speciality, but actually into a breadth of leadership or a breadth of example in the kingdom if we're willing to roll up our sleeves. Yeah. 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 That's key. Wherever it's needed. That's yeah. key. The Son of Man did not come to be served. Right. But to serve. Yeah. And to give his life as a ransom for many. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah. our that that's that's our starting point is that place of service. Yeah. Because it's in that place of service that we we give out of who we are instead of what we do. Right, right. And if we give out of what we do, uh, it may or may not be pretty, but it's not going to change mm-hmm, anything. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But if we give out of who we are, that's where we release something that actually changes people mm-hmm. and changes lives. And, I mean, the the arts are, they're more than pretty. They're definitely not less than, but there's so much more than. Mm. They are life changing right. mm-hmm. and that that's that's i mean creation itself and mm-hmm. many times right. a prophetic act yeah so we're demonstrating now yeah. you know musicians um that learn to play with anyone you know when they can just and they really mm-hmm. learn the art of playing together or playing with anyone mm-hmm. i think that is a gift artists yeah. or painters that might be a struggle but we actually do some pretty fun things because, um, again, I'm going back to like this whole thing of like working together. Um, we've done some things where uh, we were going to both paint up on the platform. And I said, I want to paint on black. And he said, well, I want to paint on white. So we made two squares. One was a black one. One was a white yeah. one. We'd start painting. But then we'd switch, we'd switch All right. and go paint on each other's painting. Yeah. No rules. You want to paint something over? Mm. And yeah. Some people go, how could you do that? First of all, that's a download from God. How can you do that? Actually, it's a it's a relationship, um, <laughs> you know, so we can. Um, but what would come out of that would either be some of them would not look so good, but but some of them would be so amazing because we were willing to say, let's right. let's just do this. Mm-hmm. And then we've done it with the team mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and done a whole like collaborative piece. And that gets really hard if your stuff is what gets covered up. But it's actually okay. It's, it's part first. of the process. Because mm-hmm. even as an artist, you might have a piece in your painting that's so beautiful, it doesn't work with the rest. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I might paint it out. <laughs> because it's 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 in dissonance, as, yeah. as you would say. So um, all of these things of really lovingly working together, mm-hmm. uh, to me, are about family Teamwork. and about beauty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they release the beauty of the Lord, mm-hmm. yeah. you know. Absolutely. Oh, man. Mm. 
That's great. Mm -hmm. Well, hey guys, thanks for joining us for this conversation. We've we've got a lot more, so mm -hmm. keep watching as we put out new episodes. Yeah. And, and if you haven't taken the Limitless course, make sure you go to our website. The information is Absolutely. right here in the bottom of your screen and you can sign up today. It will open up a whole new world and expand what you think of as spiritual creativity to places you've never thought of. So it'll be a blessing for you. Bless you guys. We'll see you next time on Conversations. Thanks, guys. Thank you, John. Thanks, John. That's great. God has planted a creative DNA in every single one of us. Unlock a deeper understanding of creativity with Limitless, an online course written and presented by Charity Bowman Webb. This course is designed to help you to understand what the creativity of God is, with biblical evidence of its importance and characteristics. If you believe you were created by God, this course is for you.